What's going on everybody? So today we are here to install the Liberty Controls Air Assist on my One Laser XRF. So hang on tight. All right, so here we are taking a closer look at what is in the kit and kind of how it all goes together. So ignore some of my tools. We'll leave this stuff kind of over here. And these are some of the screws that I've taken out of the machine to actually get ready for this install. Because the main difference between this kit and what you get as your base kit is how this is set up. So if you look at this, this is already basically designed so that way it can fit on a rail that is inside of the machine just right in here. So we'll get to that in a minute, but what happens is you have air that comes in and then air that comes out. That goes through this right here. So this gets installed and yours will actually probably come installed, but you'll have a low flow and a high flow. I know that this is low flow because it's already got this narrowed down and this is straight through. So the idea is that when you trigger in Lightburn that you want air, it's gonna go your high flow. If you turn the air off, it's going to give you your low flow by default because it's gonna run off the status of your machine. So other than that, we're gonna go into the wiring parts of this. So this guy right here, this actually plugs into the side right here and this goes to your control board because your control board is going to tell us when light burn or when the machine is saying, hey, give me air. So that's what this is gonna do. That connects to the board and gives you the signal. On the other side, what is super important about this kit is that it's not actually going to pull any power from the machine itself. It's actually going to have its own power coming from, or actually, sorry, not from the machine, but from the, the control board it's gonna pull from either the power source, so direct from the power supply, which is this one, if that's the route you choose to go, you use these and they plug right into the 24 volt power supply, or you can use this kit, which then you can use this plate to replace one of your plugs on the back of the machine and input this power supply plug here. So that way it has external power running to this at all times. Me, I'm gonna, opt for connecting it to the machine because I feel comfortable with that. But if you wanted to, you could go and get some external power. It's easy enough for me to just go make sure I've got my positive and negative from the power supply and go that route. So outside of that, you've got your regulator here. The regulator goes and it will run air into it and then out and into the back of the machine where there's actually already a port to receive the air. We'll just need to route that port into this solenoid and make sure that everything is connected together. So this comes with this connection here that would go right here and then is ready for your quarter inch quick connect with potentially like a 3 8 line. I'm gonna opt for going with the thinner line I just happen to have one of these elbows right here. So that way I could go ahead, put this guy in, and I'm gonna be able to connect my quarter inch line right into here and then rather other quarter inch line out here. So I already have some of this line that's actually gonna be running from my compressor into the machine. And we'll use some of this stuff that actually came with the kit. So that way I can best route things inside of the machine itself. So to note, there are a couple of changes that I have been discussing with Brian, who is over at the Liberty Controls. And really it comes to, this is designed to fit inside the machine as nice and neat as possible. One thing that I've noticed is that these valves coming straight up is actually getting really close to the top of the machine and makes things a little bit tight. Same thing with this being on the side it, it gets really tight trying to bend a hose into the side here. So what you'll see on the kits going forward is that these will actually be elbows similar to what I've got here. So it will come off and it'll actually route straight into the machine, making it much better and giving it a little bit more space to sit inside the machine. 
So now that we've kind of got that set up and talked about, let's go ahead, let's look inside the machine and I'll show you where it's going to mount and where things need to route. So for demonstration purposes, I've already taken out a lot of screws. So what I've done is I've actually taken off the back panel and I've taken off the screws here for this side panel. So I can actually go and open it up and get to everything that I need to. So now with this side panel off, this guy, the solenoid, is actually going to live right here on the back of this rail. So it goes and it will clip down right onto this because it's already set up to do so. You'll see here, this right here is the hose that is connected to the back of the machine that is going to plug into my solenoid. And then it's going to supply the air in and route it this way. So as we go and we put this right on here, you'll see better how things need to be plugged in. All right, so that with that clicked in, really all you do is you click that side in and then press down and these clip right onto that rail. But you can see here, this is where the top of the machine runs. So that's where I'm gonna run into an issue and really where these 90 degree connections would be much better. So you're gonna see those on the other kits that are coming out, but I'm gonna to have to make some adjustments so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take some of this line and I'm gonna lengthen these so that way it just kind of sits back over here and curves a little bit better. And then we'll co come into the T back over here where this hose is at. All right, so now you can see the extensions that I put here on these lines to then connect into our stock line. So when the cover goes on, it'll just press these down and everything will fit nice and neat. So now next, all we gotta do is we need to go and connect all of our wiring that we're gonna need here on the side and each port is designed so it can only take specific plugs. So we'll go ahead, get those connected and show you what they look like. All right, so this one right here, this is the one that's gonna go out to the control board. This one is actually going to go back to our solenoids here. And then this one right here is for our power. So if you look here, this guy will go ahead and it will route right back to this 24 volt power supply that sits right here. So I just need to get my positive and negative and get those connected. All right, so one thing to note is there are some screws here that I did loosen up so that way I could get a little bit more movement out of this here. So I loosened these up to pop this off so that way I could actually uncover this part of the power supply. So my reds right here is going with these ones that are labeled 24V. And then the black here is going with the blues that are 0V. So that's zero, this is power. So negative, positive. Got those wired up and back to the controller for the solenoids, this guy right here. So now, we've got to go and we've got to get this wire back in here. So down here at the very bottom, this port right here that I've actually pulled this plug out of is where this needs to connect. Because this right now is running the stock pump that is running the air. So the stock pump puts out enough air to be efficient, but not enough to really keep things nice and clean, have those really efficient, precise cuts that I'm looking for. So pop this out. You really don't have to do anything. You could run it back, cap it off, whatever. But now that it's not getting any power to it, it's really not hurting anything. I'm just gonna leave it here and I'm gonna plug the other one in. Okay, so I've got this other one plugged in. Just have this one out of the way. And you can see right there, this light green plug is the new one that I've added. Really, I just have this one, it's going straight in between here and I've got it routed back over to here. So I'll end up going and tucking these wires and doing using some zip ties to really just keep things clean, but it's time to put things back together and test it and make sure everything's working. All right, so I went ahead and to test before I put everything back together, I've set this little file up, I've got the air turned off and I'm gonna go ahead and say start and because it's zero power, we're gonna say go, and I can hear a slight hissing, but 
very little air, just, to, just kind of a bleed of air coming out. So now we're going to stop it. I heard it turn off. Then I'm going to go ahead and turn this back on. And again, remember, I'm doing this with zero power, so no power is going out to the machine. Then start, and I'm going to say yes. And now I can hear that that airflow is much increased. So I'm going to go ahead and even bump it up some more. And now you can really hear that air coming through. All right, so now you can see I've got the main part of the case and controller back on here. Um, really, this just comes, slides off here, and it kind of fits right on this corner here. And it's time to put all of the screws back in. So screws mainly are here. You've got some that go across here, and there are some that are just kind of hidden underneath this weather stripping here. So I went through, got all those, and then there is one more right over here. Outside of that, there's actually this little main cover that actually goes right on here. All the screw spots are pretty well visible, and the back plate. So the back plate, pretty much right across the top and right across the back. That's where all those are. But I'm going to leave this off because I'm still doing some more experimenting and doing some more content. But I'll get this part put back together so that way you can see it all complete. Um, one thing that is additional that will be addressed is these connections here. Where they're at, they kind of sit a little proud of this. Granted, they do bend down and they fit just fine, but um, Brian over at Liberty Controls is going to make a better fit for these, it, whether it is a 90 degree or just something that is much more flexible, so that way it's not putting any stress on these wires. All right, so now we're just at the last part and that was connecting everything. So this blue line here is actually coming from my compressor and going into the inside of this regulator. And then my orange here is going out to the machine on the back. And so let me go ahead and reach you around so you can actually see where that connection is. And let's see if we can get to it. So right here, where this orange line is, that's what I'm talking about. It actually plugs right in there. You can see I still have the back cover off, but yeah, so this is gonna go ahead and just plug right into there. And because we took that black line that was inside of here, connected it to our new setup in there, now all of that is running together. So this is it, it's ready to go. Uh, we already did the testing. So the one thing that you wanna keep in mind is just keep an eye on this guy here. So this is your water separator. And so if you do, for any reason, need to get any of the water out of there, like that's how you do it. You go ahead and you can open that up, spray that out. So that way it's keeping the water out of your machine. All right, so there you have it. That is the install of the Liberty Controls Air Assist Kit that is specifically designed for the X-Series machine. You may see some differences between the XT and the XRF, and that's mainly because you will have less space in the XT because it uses a larger power supply for your laser tube. This one, it's running off of that 24 volt power supply, and so it kind of saves you some space in there. So that is what you need to do to get this installed and up and running. It is going to see a little bit of a difference in the design, like I outlined with some of the connections for the airlines and even some of the connections for the wiring. But all those things are just to make improvements on what is already there, which I feel like is an outstanding kit and giving you the performance that you want to jump to the next step. This is not a required upgrade to use the machine. You can use the machine as it is straight out of the box, but this just pushes you to that next level to make sure that you are saving time with your engravings and with your cutting. Cutting, you're getting smoother, cleaner cuts, and with your engraving, you're able to dial that air back so that way you're getting as clean of an engraving as you possibly can. Hopefully this video was helpful, and if it was, please like, subscribe, ring that bell, and we will see you on the next one.